Using transformations to graph quadratic functions, our objective is to transform quadratic functions, as well as describe the effects of change in the coefficients of y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Why learn this? You can use transformations of quadratic functions to analyze changes in breaking distance. Let's start with some parent functions. The parent function for a linear equation would be f of x equals x. So your input value will match your output value. For the quadratic parent function, your f of x equals x squared, meaning your input value will match the output value squared. So if you have negative 2 squared, it's going to give you 4. Negative 1 squared, that will be 1, and so on and so forth. Let's look at an example. So we're going to graph a quadratic function using a table. So our function that we need to graph is f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. So let's start with our table. We have some arbitrary values for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we're going to take our time and input them into our function, and we'll get an output. So for example, when 1 is our input, we have 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 8 equals 3. So our coordinate that we would plot in our graph is 1, 3. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next ones on your own. Now that you've had a moment to try these on your own, let's see how close you came. So with an input value of 2, you get an output of 0, so your coordinate is 2, 0. For an input of 3, you get negative 1, so your coordinate is 3, negative 1. And for 4, you have an output of 0, so our coordinate would be 4, 0. And for 5, our output is 3, so our coordinate is 5, 3. And when you plot these points, you will see that you have a nice curve when you connect them. So there is your quadratic function. Let's take it up a step. Let's look at translations of quadratic functions. So we have a horizontal translation and a vertical translation. Horizontal goes left and right, and vertical goes up and down. So we can use this f of x minus h is the same as saying x minus h squared, because we're dealing with a parabola or quadratic function. And it moves left if the h value is less than 0, and moves right if the h value is greater than 0. Once again, keep in mind that it's a minus in your equation or your formula here. So to go left, it's a negative h. So that would look like x plus 5, for example, because it would be minus a negative. So minus negative h would make it move left. But it would appear with a positive sign because minus a negative is positive. Now for our vertical shift. So we're just going to take our function and add k. So x squared plus k. We're going to move down if k is less than 0, and move up if k is more than 0. Let's practice. All right, so we have g of, a, g of x equals the quantity of x plus 3 squared plus 1. And we're going to use our f of x equals x squared as a guide and then describe the transformation. So we're going to go from our f of x equals x squared, and we're going to transform it to this one. So we need to try and figure out what has happened using the rules we just learned. Well, we can start with the fact that we know this is supposed to have a minus in it. So if we rewrite this, we can rewrite this as x minus negative 3 squared, plus 1. So if it's a negative 3, so the one inside with the x moves left and right, so our h is this, and our k will be our positive 1. And if we flash back to our previous piece, if h is less than 0, it moves left, and if k is more than 0, it goes up. So therefore, you're going to have your parent function 
and your parent function is going to move to the left 3 and go up 1. Take a moment and pause the video and try B. Alright, so now if we look at B, we have a minus 2, so it's already in that form, so our 2 ends up being our H, and this minus 1 is our K. So therefore, our graph is going to be going to the right two units, and then down 1. So to the right 2, and down 1 unit. Everything else stays the same, for now. Let's look at reflections. A reflection across the y-axis. So, your input values are going to change. So you have f of x equals x squared. So f of negative x, or you can say, okay, well we have negative x squared. Which in the end is going to equal x squared. So the function f of x equals x squared is its own reflection across the y-axis. It's not going to look any different. But how about if we look at a reflection across the x-axis? So our output values are going to change. So the whole function is going to change. So it's going across our x-axis. So we do the whole thing. So our negative is outside, meaning that now it's going to look or appear upside down. One more here, we've got stretches and compressions. A horizontal stretch or compression by a factor of the absolute value of b. Let's look at our input values are going to change. So when you have, you have f of x equals x squared. So because we're going horizontal, it goes with the x, it goes inside. So our 1 over b is going to be the formula that we would use here to match stretch and compression. Very similar to our previous ones that we've learned. So, if the absolute value of b is greater than 1, this stretch is going to move away from the y-axis. And if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to compress towards the y-axis. Now for vertical stretch and compression, the output values are going to change. So we're going to multiply by whatever value it happened to have been, we're going to multiply that to the entire function. So a times our entire function, so we'd have a times x squared in the case of a quadratic where we're multiplying it to our parent function. If a is greater than 1, it's going to stretch away from the x-axis. But if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to compress towards the x-axis. The numbers you're multiplying by are going to help you do this. Let's look at an example. So reflecting, stretching, and compressing quadratic functions. So we're going to once again use our parent function as a guide, and we're going to try to figure out what our graph is going to look like for negative 4x squared. All right, well, let's start with the fact that it's negative. So because it's negative, it's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. So we're going to reflect across the x-axis. So there's our negative, because it's negative to the entire function here. And the absolute value of a, so that would be our 4 here, so g is a vertical stretch, because our 4 is being multiplied to the entire function. It's not just inside with the x, kind of like over here, as a hint. So because we're multiplying our 4 to our entire function, we're going to be moving something vertically. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. So, we're reflecting across the x-axis, and then we're going to stretch it by a factor of 4. So, start with your parent function, which would be this blue one on top, and then we're going to reflect it, and then stretch it by a factor of 4. 
So that means instead of it going to 1, 1 on either side, and negative 1, 1, you're going to go to negative 1, negative 4, and 1, negative 4. Take a moment and pause the video and try B. Now that you've had a moment to try B, let's look at it together. So you have this one half, and it's inside with our X. So therefore, we know we're doing something horizontally. And if you recall, when you're dealing with something horizontally, it was 1 over B. So that means B, that helps, is equal to 2, not a half, because it's 1 over B. So we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So when we graph it, it's going to still be on the same side here, because it's going to be still going up, and it's just going to stretch out. All right. So let's look at the vertex form of a quadratic function. The vertex form of a quadratic function. So you have f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h, and then squared, plus k. So h indicates the horizontal translation, which is what we were just looking at, and k indicates the vertical translation. Then a is going to indicate a reflection across the x-axis and or a vertical stretch or compression. So a has quite, the big of a quite, quite a big job, we'll put it that way. So let's try some examples where we have to do a lot more than just one transformation at a time, or translation at a time. So we have the parent function f of x equals x squared is reflected across the x-axis, vertically stretched by a factor of 6, and translated three units left to create g. So we're looking for our g of x function here. So our key is to take this step by step. All right, so a is going to be negative because we need to reflect across the x-axis, and we're vertically stretching by a factor of 6. So therefore, if you put the two of them together, your a is going to be negative 6. We're also translating left 3 units. So if we're going left and right, that's going to be our h. So our h is negative 3 because we're going left 3 units. Well, in the end, that's really all there is. So now let's substitute that in. So we have our g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And now we're going to substitute our values in. So our a is really negative 6. Our h is negative 3, so we have x minus negative 3 squared and, well, plus 0 since there is no k to speak of. And our last step would be to just simplify. So g of x is going to equal negative 6 times x plus 3 squared. And that one's that. Let's look at an automotive example, or application. So, the minimum braking distance d in feet for a vehicle on dry concrete is approximated by the function d of v equals 0 0.045 v squared, where v is the vehicle's speed in miles per hour. If the vehicle's tires are in poor condition, the braking distance function is dp of v equals 0 0.068 v squared, what kind of transformation describes this change? So what does the transformation mean? Take a moment and pause the video and try this on your own. When you return, the answer will be on the screen. Okay, so to highlight, the only difference between the two are the A values. So to find the stretch factor by comparing the new to the old, we divide, and we see that the tires in poor condition take about 1.5 times as many feet to stop. And that ends our lesson.